Hi everyone, so today I want to show you this Pyramid Arrow Fold card. Now again, as with some of my designs, I think this is an original design because I literally had to come up with a template myself. Um, I had a couple of failed attempts, but it was inspired by the Arrow Fold tent card that we did a few weeks ago and also by something that I saw online that looked a little bit like this, but um, it wasn't the same as this. And there was no details on how to make what they wanted, you know, what they'd done. Um, and so I just kind of set about trying to work out how they'd made it and ended up with this, which is different. So I will say it's an original design, but if you've done something similar, then please let me know. Or if you've seen somebody else do the same thing, please let me know. Um, but yes, yeah, so I'm calling it a pyramid arrow, arrow fold card. So basically it's a like a tent fold design, as you can see there. Um, and you've got, obviously, like you can see there, little flaps. That's your arrow fold bit there. And then you've got your design on the front. Um, and then the same with this one. I just kept it nice and simple um, with a butterfly on the, on the front. Now, this is a, a dual, dual winged butterfly, which obviously, if you flap it up, it looks very nice. Um, you've got your two types of wings. So yeah, so this is this is what we're going to be doing. So for this, you will need, and it stands up nicely as well, because um, it's got a base. I showed, just turn it on the side there. It's got a nice little sort of tent fold base, and it folds flat. There is a bit of weight because you've obviously got quite a lot of card folded up there, but it does fold flat for posting. Um, this would fit into a. This would fit into a six by six envelope. Okay, I mean it's slightly smaller than six by six, but just to allow for the wadge, I would go for a six by six square envelope that this would fit into. Okay, um, the total measurement of the card, because I always get asked this, the total measurement, like the footprint of the card, is uh, five and a half by five and a half. Yeah, five and a half by five and a half is what the actual card measures. But to be on the safe side, I would definitely put that into a six by six. OK, right. So let's get into it. OK, so you need a, a large piece of base card, which is five and a half by eleven and a half. So along the long edge, you're going to score it. Um, well, you're going to make a mark first. So you're going to make a mark at two and three quarters at the top and then just flip it over and also on the bottom. Flip it back again. Then you're going to score it top to bottom at five and a half. And then you're going to make another mark at eight and a quarter at the top. And you're going to flip it over and make a mark at the bottom at eight and a quarter. And then you're going to score it all the way top to bottom at 11. OK, and then if you turn it round and fold it in half, so fold it down your five and a half inch line, you just need to score halfway at two and three quarters and just make a little mark okay so you've got a little mark halfway down the halfway line so that's the very center of the card well yeah kind of um and then you've got your marks top and bottom and your score lines okay so then what you want to do is pull out a cork board no, this is an old cork board so this is what i use for scoring on um, and you're going to take a ruler And you just need to score from the middle point, which is your two and three quarter mark there, to the bottom corner and also to this side mark. OK, so once you've done that and you've done it both sides, you're going to repeat exactly the same marks on the other side. OK, so this time you're going to go, you're not going to go to the bottom here because you've got a tab just in there. So you're going to go from this middle bit to there for that 11 inch score line, from the middle bit to the 11 inch score line, from the middle to the mark, from the middle to the mark. OK, so you can do the same again as you did on this side. So there we go, we've got the 
scored the card um it's all the right lines now you just be a bit be a bit careful if you've got really linty card or card that's easy breaks easily um then you're going to struggle a bit at the center here i've got a bit of a line and also i've noticed that where i've scored it I haven't scored that accurately so my lines aren't quite in the center there my lines aren't quite matching up so you just need to be a bit tricky a bit careful with that um, what we're going to do now is we're going to fold this tab line over and burnish. Okay, and then we're going to fold along um, all of our lines. Now, this from here to there should be pretty much a straight line. You could score it as such, but when I've done that in the past, if there's any problems, if any like discrepancy on your markings and your scorings, then it comes up, it shows up at this point, because then when you go across here and you go across there, those two lines do not cross on the halfway point if you've made a mistake, okay? So that's why I always do it separately, because then it, it kind of it makes allowances for that. So the first fold, which is the, the one that goes from the centre to the corner, is going to be a mountain fold. So we're going to fold that over, and as I said, you should be able to do it all the way across. Okay, and again with the other side, same again. Okay, so then you end up with that. Okay, so next what you want to do is you're going to score these other lines, these two here, are going to go in. They're going to be valley folds. And again, in theory, that should be a straight line. However, it's not always a straight line, but you can give it a whirl and see if it works. Okay, so as you can probably see, my card is a bit linty. And so because it's a bit linty, I've ended up with a few creases I don't really want um, there. But I mean, it's fine because that's going to be the that's going to be the back of the card, I think. Yeah, that's going to be the back of the card. So it's not a big problem. So then if what you want to do is you pick it up and just hold it in the middle and squish those middle bits in like that. You should be able to, if you squish, if you sort of hold them flat like this, okay, and squish them in, then you should be able to fold the whole thing flat. Now, as you can see, mine's squiffed off because my lines weren't very good. So when you do this, just make sure that you marry it up. So just fight with it a bit because obviously some of my lines aren't quite right. Fight with it, get it to where it needs to be, and then burnish it down into place where it should be. Okay, and this is... A bit of a fold with all arrow fold cards, you do get this. Um, you do really need to be accurate with your creases. Okay, so that I've given it a bit of a burnish, I've told it who's boss, and so now that folds down nicely. Let's quickly do that bit at the top there. There we go, and that folds down much better than it did. Okay, so that's the base of your card. You also need another piece, which is five and a half by two and a half. Okay, so on this piece, we're just going to score at a one inch and at two inch. Okay, so that's all we're going to do with that piece. And this piece is like the base, the hinged base. So you want to score, well, we'll fold one of them going one way. And then the other one going the other way. So you're basically concertina folding. So you end up with that. Okay. So next you want to grab your red tape. So you're going to put some red tape along the outside of your tab here. Okay. So now before you stick it in, one thing you do need to do, because this is rectangular and it has 90 degree angles on the end, whereas this doesn't because it goes in. So what you want to do is if you just lay this on top of your card, just fold your crease line in, just lay this on top of your card like that. 
and then if you just turn it over you just want to cut this off now I'm going to draw it first and the same with that bit there as well you just want to cut that bit off okay so let's just draw that in in fact I'm going to do this one first so I'm just going to cut this off first just mitre that edge like that and then I'm going to do the same with this one so let's just put this back in place Fold that in like that put that on the bottom there get it lined up with the bottom edge and then just draw your line in okay so there's my line drawn on so I'm now with the whole thing closed up so I've got the whole thing closed up I'm now just going to cut from the center that not the center the corner edge just to just pass there so you want to cut it inside that line you've just drawn it's better to be a little bit too small like a little bit further in than to be not far enough okay so that gives you that so if I open that out it would look like that okay so let's fold it back up again and now what we're going to do is we're going to stick that onto the inside of here so you want it to be like that okay so from the front you've got a little tent like a mountain and then you've got a valley behind with the tape you're going to take the tape off and we're going to stick that inside here when you stick this in you're probably best to open this up and just stick it inside now you need to just make sure that that the line in fact i need to trim mine a little more i think probably comes inside those crease lines okay so we're just going to stick that down okay so hopefully you can see that so this bit here that's mitered you need to make sure that doesn't come over that crease line so make sure it's mitered within the crease and the same on this side okay now then with this side you won't want to put you don't want to put the the tape here you want to put it on the inside of this put my red tape on so now what i want to do is i'm going to fold it all up like that i'm going to fold that up and this is going to stick oh, it wants to bounce out your hands. So if I go upside down, okay, this wants to stick just on the inside of this base. So can you see this base here? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it down like that. I'm going to put this cut edge here of the base into that crease there. Okay, it's quite difficult to explain, but remember my card is upside down, okay? So I'm going to put that on there like that. Can you see? like that and then I'm just going to fold that edge over like that and then I'm going to shut the whole thing flat once it's down like that and stick it down now as I've done that it's made this top bit bubble a little bit so I'm just going to burnish it so that it goes the way it wants to go because it clearly doesn't want to do what I'm telling it to do so we're just going to give it a bit of a a bit of a squidge okay like that so there's your card now I usually do it so that um, you've literally got the folded edge there so the tabs on the bottom so you can see and then the tab from the base is at the back because you can't see that as as much so that's that so that's the trickiest bit done so next you want to bring in um, some matte card so your matte panel measures five by five and your pattern panel measures four and a half inches by four and a half inches okay now normally you'd only go down by a quarter but because we're dealing with triangles then we need to go down by half an inch so what you want to do on the back now you see I've already done mine on the back you want to go along the top so make sure you always leave it the same way up Go along the top and make a mark at two and a half inches. 
then draw from there down to the bottom corner from there down to the bottom corner okay you then want to measure down the sides and mark at two and a half inches on both sides and then you do the same thing again you go from the two and a half inch mark to the two and a half inch mark from this two and a half inch mark to this two and a half inch mark and you draw it on in pencil and then you add tape all around the outside and then down the actual lines okay so I've gone all around the outside with white tape and then I've put tape down these lines like that and then I'm going to cut it so now I'm going to go ahead and cut that but I'm going to show you the pattern panel as well because then I can cut them both at the same time so the pattern panel is four and a half by four and a half which means that you are going to do exactly the same markings but you can do it at two and a quarter inches because that's where halfway is so again you mark at two and a half inches on the top on the sides and you leave the bottom and then you mark from you draw a line from the two and a half at the top to the bottom corner from the two and a half so two and a quarter even from the two and a quarter at the top to the bottom two and a quarter to this two and a quarter same from here to there and then the same from there to there so you end up with a triangle there and then two outer triangle marks there and again you add your tape around the outside and then you add a bit of tape down the line so it straddles the pencil line I don't know if you can see if you can see that so my pencil line goes down the middle and I've got tape on either side so when I cut that I'm going to end up with tape both sides it's just an easier way so when you come to stick you haven't got to be sticking down little triangles basically so that's why I do it right so I'm going to go ahead now and cut those okay pieces. so once you've cut them out you should end up with something that looks like this now what I do is as I cut it I lay it on the mat so I know exactly where the pieces need to go if you just randomly cut things and then you've got a big mess and it's like a jigsaw puzzle you've got to put it back together again so I usually cut a line lay it down cut a line put it on the mat cut another line and just keep doing that okay all the way across so now what we're going to do is stick our mat our patterns on top of our mats okay um, the other thing to notice when you're doing your um, your lines on the back make sure that if you've got a right way up like I had here with little um, princesses and stuff um, that the top of it is where your point is going to be okay so just make sure that you are cutting your pattern paper the right way around so I'm going to go ahead now and stick this onto there So once you've stuck everything down, you should end up with this. Now you might find that some of your pieces, like this for example, the borders aren't really even and you've got gaps, like you know, you've not got much border. If that's the case, then um, if it's these two corner pieces, just try and get it as central as possible. Uh, if it's the middle piece, you should, you should be fine with the middle piece. It's usually these two that play up. Um, if you do have that problem, then just prioritise the straight edge because the straight edge is this piece here which is the bit you're going to see okay you're not really going to see you're not going to see these two edges because they're on the inside okay now the other thing I've just realized which I didn't realize when I was cutting my paper I am going to end up with some cats and princesses that are upside down um, because you actually have to flip them around to fit them on that back section so you're better off to use any way up paper okay if you're using any work pattern you're better off otherwise you will end up with something upside down on these inside pieces so now we're going to go ahead and stick them down so take your card and as I said before you want the folded edge at the front but take your card and then what you're going to do is you're just going to stick if you start with your middle one your middle piece goes on the middle there so we stick that down first okay like that and then we're going to take the two triangular pieces and they're going to fit in like that. Now what I would do, don't try and get it central, literally butt this edge up against that crease line, okay, in order to get it in. Now as you can see, again, my border's not completely straight, and that does happen. It's just because of where you folded might not be quite accurate with where you've cut, etc. But because there's so much going on, it's not such a problem, it's not so obvious. Um, so if it really a pro if it's really a problem to you, then just try and you know maybe trim your papers down or whatever before you sit them together.
Okay, so you end up with that. So now what you're going to do is you're going to take this piece on the left and you're going to turn it over here and put it on the right. Oh, so it's not going to be upside down, that's good then. So this is going to go in that little back section there. Okay, so you're going to stick that down. And again, I will just push it right into that crease um, and you can kind of size it up as you stick it down. So actually it's not going to end up upside down. That's good. Okay, so can you see there, I've stuck that in. You can just kind of pop it out if you want to and try and stick it. But I've literally butted that edge there right into that crease line. Okay, right in. And then I've got a little bit of a border, sort of narrow, getting wide at the bottom. Um, but you only see the bottom half of it anyway, so it's not really a problem. And then this one's going to go the same place on the other side. we go so that's stuck in the other side so there's your card with its paper stuck on so we got to do now is add your toppers so I've just chosen a little princess topper and a little on your special day which I'll probably put at the top I think so I'm going to go ahead and stick those down Okay, so there we have our finished card. So as you can see, it's quite nice. It stands up. I just like it because it's a bit different. Um, obviously, it does fold flat for posting. You have got a bit of wadge there, but I think... I mean, I've used foam pads, so I don't know whether that would go through the, the UK post. But, um, but it, you know, it's a hand-delivered card, a special card. It's just a bit different, a bit funky. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you'll have a go. Um, please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Um, leave a comment if you'd like to. Uh, if you've got any queries, I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.